All right, so feeding cattle is one of the things that we do during the winter, of course, when it gets cold and snowy. And uh, so today I'm just gonna shoot a little video and show you how exactly we we do that here at, at the at the Rock Hills Ranch. Um, today I'm gonna be feeding about 285 cows. Um, what I'm feeding them is uh, CRP hay and then uh, those stacks over there are uh, oh it, it's called reed canary grass and it grows in real wet spots uh, this year of course uh, 2012 was pretty dry so those, even those wet spots uh, we could go in and cut hay so anyways that's it's not real high quality hay but neither is the CRP hay um, but it's it, that's the nice thing about cows is that they can uh, take low quality forages and convert them into energy and and meats basically and so that's kind of the wonder of the cow I guess taking stuff that we can't use and using it to make food for us so anyways I <clears throat> I can haul uh, five bales on that wagon and then I can haul one more in the scoop of the tractor so sorry if it's a little jerky I'm trying to drive and video at the same time here but uh, you can see there a couple of silos that, that's kind of for us it's kind of a thing of the past I guess this is right now I'm over at my grandma's place and my grandpa used to use those silos to put silage in which is corn that's been harvested uh, or chopped I guess when it's still green and then it ferments in those silos he used to feed that to cattle that he was fattening to to go to kill it. Silage, at least for our operation, is too high quality to use for feeding. Just feeding cows is too expensive to do that with. So we like to use cheap cheap sources of forage to keep them going for the winter. Actually, um, today is one of the rare days so far that I've had to feed these cows. They've been out grazing corn stalks most of the time. Um, after the corn is harvested in the fall, we can put those cows out there and they'll eat the, the leaves and the husks and, and uh, if there's any ears that fell on the ground that the combine missed, uh, the cows will eat that too. And Again, they're just using things that are waste otherwise, you know, if, if, if we don't graze it with the cattle, that stuff just lays out there and decomposes and actually grazing can help that decomposition process and return those nutrients back into the soil that much faster um, by letting the cow digest them and and uh, so and it's a really cheap feed source for us it's cheaper than uh, and easier than having to feed hay so we try to maximize the use of corn stock grazing in, in the fall and winter but here the last couple days it's been real cold last night it was 13 below at my place and they until I can get them to some fresh corn stalks I decided uh, for a couple days here I'm just gonna get them get them fed with some hay and and uh, keep them happy that way I guess one thing about hay it's kinda kinda neat I guess is it's more than just feed for the cows but in every bale of hay there's a bunch of nutrients you know it's not just it's not just water and uh, sunlight that go into making hay but also all the minerals and whatnot that that are in the soil so as we feed the hay it uh, we, we're basically putting nutrients uh, not only into the cow but also back on the ground in the place where we fed the hay so that, that can be a good thing or bad thing because we're taking nutrients out of the out of the field that we're harvesting the hay from but we also get to decide where we want to put those nutrients uh, when we feed them. So in this case, we're feeding them out in uh, this pasture here at my grandma's place, which I guess it's not a, it's not in poor condition by any means, but uh, it's kind of a nice thing to be able to take these nutrients that were in places that we can't use them very well, which is like this slough where we cut this reed canary grass and the CRP where we cut this other hay and we can put them uh, out in this pasture where we can graze 
again, I apologize if it's been kind of jerky, but it is kind of tough to fill the hay rack with one hand. So now I'm just hooking up the, the wagon here. Sometimes it can be kind of tricky. And it seems like when it gets cold, that's when you have problems too. Um, yesterday, I couldn't get this tractor started because uh, the battery was shot, which I didn't know until yesterday. So I had to drive over here with the other tractor that does not have a cab or a heater or anything. And actually, it wasn't too bad. I just bundled up and made me appreciate that my great grandpa probably used a team of horses and had to fork the hay by hand. So. I guess I shouldn't complain too much about not having a heater. This is a nice place to keep cattle in the wintertime. You can see there's trees there uh, that the, when the weather gets bad we let them in here and they can get behind those trees and get out of the wind. That, that makes such a huge difference for them to be able to have wind protection when you have a 20 or 30 below wind chill. Um, you can see I fed some hay there the other day. They cleaned that up really well. Um, that means they were pretty hungry when they when they clean it up that good. Uh, that means they're hungry. <laughs> so I've been kind of feeding them a little bit more now, just to make sure that they're getting all they need. Out there, you can see the cornfield that they had been grazing. Uh, they finished that up uh, about a week ago. One acre of corn stalks can. Uh, that's the, I guess the rule of thumb we use is that one acre can feed a cow for one month. So we got 285 cows and I kind of figure they're, they need about around 10 acres a day, uh, 10 acres of corn stalks I should say, uh, per day to, to keep them fed. Um, that's pretty conservative. We could probably go uh, down to about 7 or 8 acres per head per day, or I'm sorry, 7 or 8 acres for the whole herd for a day, but I like to just take the better stuff. I don't want to graze it too hard. I want to make sure there's good residue left over because that helps to protect the soil in the spring before the crop gets planted. It kind of helps to protect it from wind and soil erosion. So, so you don't want to graze it too hard, just like the grass. You want to leave something there uh, to, to catch snow and to pr protect the soil in the spring. So as you can see, I enrolled some hay over here. My last trip out, cow was kind of just finding it. So. And these bales, if you unroll them the right way, they unroll really easy. Because it's, imagine, they're made just kind of like a snowman. You know how you make a snowman, you take a ball of snow and you just keep rolling it until it, as it gets bigger? Well, these bales are, basically the same idea sorry about that so not matter it's just a matter of unrolling them in the right direction and get this the twine broke there we go oh, that one just about did all by itself so it's it's not too bad, and I got a little help from the hills here too, so. so as you can see, that's pretty, it's pretty coarse hay. Um, this isn't, this isn't anything fancy we're giving them, but for these cows right now, they're in uh, mid-gestation, um, like so the second trimester basically, kind of the, towards the end of the second trimester, and um, their nutrient requirements are, are pretty low because they're not having to produce any milk for a calf like they would be in the summertime and uh, the calf isn't in, that's growing inside of them isn't huge right now um, so it's it's not a it's not a time where they need to have really good nutrition it's actually probably the it's the time of the year where they need the least nutrition but coming up here pretty soon they're gonna need better better quality feed because uh, the last trimester is is important for nutrition for these cattle. So 
I got a few more bales to unroll here, but I guess I just wanted to kind of show you how we feed the cattle in the wintertime. Nothing too exciting, but I uh, thought maybe some, somebody might be interested in it. So.